Welcome back, Earthlings and aliens. I am so happy to have you here. I heard you in the comments, and it has become very clear to me that when you all think of the wonders of the universe, you go straight to Jupiter's red spot, and so today, that is the topic of the video. Essentially, the Great Red Spot on Jupiter is considered the largest storm in the solar system. Right off the bat, that's not necessarily true. In 2011, there was a storm on Saturn which was like six times bigger, but that's gone, so we'll move on. It is time to focus on the current biggest single storm and, to our knowledge, the longest persisting storm in the solar system. The Great Red Spot is 16,500 kilometers across, which is about 1.3 times the size of Earth. The Great Red Spot spins counterclockwise and it sits below the equator of Jupiter. It also travels counterclockwise around the planet. The storm stays in the same latitude as it travels around the planet, which might be normal and it might be weird, but it is markedly different than similar storms on Neptune, which travel up and down as they travel around the planet. Neptune storms also have the ability to stop and reverse. So I'm inclined to think that Jupiter's great red spot is the normal one. Like a hurricane on Earth, the center of the storm is relatively calm and the winds get stronger the farther out you go. The winds in the great red spot can reach up to 640 kilometers an hour. For reference, the fastest wind speeds ever recorded in a storm on Earth that wasn't a tornado was Cyclone Olivia in 1996, reaching about 400 kilometers an hour, which is of course very fast but still not comparable. So that's what we know about the storm, but there are four big things that we don't know. First of all, we don't know what's happening underneath the top layer of the storm. Infrared data shows that the Great Red Spot itself is colder and higher in altitude than most of the other clouds on the planet. However, the upper atmosphere above the storm is significantly hotter than the rest of the planet. Astronomers think this could be sound waves produced by the storm traveling upwards and converting into energy in the upper atmosphere, which is crazy and makes me think that the storm is very loud. In 2017, the Juno spacecraft conducted a microwave radiometer scan of the storm, which suggested that its vertical depth extended to about 240 kilometers below the cloud level. But other than that number, what's actually under the storm remains a mystery. The next thing we don't know might surprise you. We don't know why it's red, which is a big part of its brand. Scientists think that Jupiter's atmosphere consists of ammonia, ammonium hydrosulfide, and water, but they can't figure out how these chemicals interact to create red. And of course, those aren't the only chemicals in Jupiter's upper atmosphere, but they don't know exactly what is, so they don't know what's interacting to create that color. And it could be chemicals, radiation, altitude, or any combination of those things. And it's also not always red. It varies from red to white to pink. Pretty recently, the Hubble Space Telescope uncovered another mystery about the Great Red Spot. For years and years, it took very precise photos of it, and when scientists analyzed it, they discovered that it essentially has two lanes of wind, and the wind in the outer lane is speeding up. Those winds have increased by up to 8% from 2009 to 2020. But again, we can't see inside it, so nobody knows what's fueling it and how it's maintaining its energy. Which might not seem too weird because we see wind speeds increase in storms on Earth when they're getting stronger, but it's because of the next mystery that makes it weird. The Great Red Spot is shrinking. It's getting stronger but smaller, and as it's doing that, it's becoming less of an oval and more of a circle. The storm is currently about 16,500 kilometers across. That is huge. However, the Great Red Spot has arguably been observed since the 1600s. After 1713, there were no recorded observations for about 100 years, but after 1830, there were continued observations until today. And historical observations show that at one point, the Great Red Spot was twice the length that it is now. Now. It's getting smaller by about a thousand kilometers every year, which makes me very concerned that in 20 years it won't exist anymore. And we don't know why. 
and it makes me personally desperate for a space mission to go out there and examine it and figure out what's underneath and why it's shrinking and why it's red and all of it before it's gone. And there is some evidence that while it looks like it's shrinking to us, it's actually getting taller, but I guess we'll see. But whether we're witnessing its demise or not, the Great Red Spot has been a fixture of astronomy for hundreds of years, and its power and mystery certainly makes it deserve a spot in my Wonders of the Universe series. Thank you so much for joining me and I cannot wait to see you in the next video. And of course, thank you to my patrons on Patreon who voted for the Great Red Spot as the topic of this video. Today's Patreon shoutout goes to Alan Smith. Thank you so much for your support. If you want to see exclusive Q&A videos, get the opportunity to vote on future YouTube video topics, and get regular space news roundups, please join my Patreon at the link in my bio. Goodbye. I should not do that.